Hello, I'm JW, and uh, something slightly different in this video. Uh, what we've got here is uh, this item, which has uh, come from China, and uh, this was ordered on the uh, Banggood.com website, and it cost uh, seven dollars fifty, which uh, in UK pounds is about uh, four pounds seventy-five, and that included free shipping. So uh, let's have a look inside. Now here's the uh, item itself. It's uh, fairly small and uh, may not be able to see here, but it uh, states on here what it should be, which is a uh, digital HD TV receiver. And uh, they've put the value as uh, five dollars twenty-five. So this actually was seven dollars fifty, including uh, free shipping, well, shipping included, of course. So uh, let's uh, just open it up and see uh, what's inside. Now it is supposed to be a uh, television receiver. And, uh, so this was uh, incredibly cheap. We only disadvantage, of course, it does take uh, three weeks or so to actually be delivered. So uh, this was, of course, ordered some considerable time ago. So let's just see uh, what we've got. Now the contents at least do uh, to resemble the uh, picture that was on the website. So uh, we have a uh, very small disk there with the software on it the uh, USB actual thing there with a uh, connection there for the antenna and uh, it doesn't fit that very well but uh, well, we'll deal with that in a moment. A little remote control, seems reasonable, it's got the uh, tab there to move to activate the battery and of course the uh, small uh, antenna there with the uh, connection wire so let's just take that out of there. And of course the idea is this plugs into the uh, computer and you can attach the aerial and receive television pictures with it. And of course this is a digital receiver. There's no analogue television in the UK anymore. That was all turned off several years ago. So uh, theoretically we should just be able to plug this in and it should all work. And of course uh, installing the uh, software provided on this little mini CD. Now uh, there is a potential issue here in that this aerial I really can't expect this is actually going to work particularly well at this location because uh, we're actually a very considerable distance from the uh, actual television transmitter here and uh, therefore uh, although this might work in a uh, sensible uh, high signal area this is what you might call on the fringes so uh, it's fairly implausible that this is actually going to work but uh, nevertheless we'll give it a try anyhow but uh, we can of course uh, connect to the external aerial which uh, is going to be far more likely to actually work assuming of course that it uh, worked at all. So uh, let's see if we can get this installed on the computer and see what happens. Now here's the item on the uh, Banggood website, uh, I say banggood.com and the uh, code there is SKU007322 and it's $7.50 uh, which at the moment works out to about £4.85. Uh, mine was actually £4.71, obviously the exchange rate has altered something in the last few weeks. You can also buy this from their UK warehouse for 9 69 but to the only difference is it gets here a bit quicker. I don't mind waiting then, as it says there, 7 to 20 business days. This one actually took uh, just under three weeks, so that seems to be uh, fairly reasonable. And uh, the picture of the item there, I mean, it looks uh, pretty much the same as what we've actually received. There's the uh, actual USB bit to plug in, the little uh, remote control, and of course the antenna there with the uh, little short lead and the plug on the end so uh, that certainly matches the description of what we've been sent so uh, let's see if the uh, software can actually be installed and if this thing actually works. Now I don't have any uh, screen capture software so we just have to uh, use the camera at the uh, screen there at the moment but uh, this is what's on the disc here so uh, let's just uh, make sure it's not riddled with uh, viruses or something horrendous. Let's hope not and uh, well, some of these files on here seem to be rather old. I mean, that one there is dated 2008, and even these directories here are 2012. So uh, that might suggest that uh, this isn't exactly the most up-to-date disk, but uh, no doubt we can download a more up-to-date one from somewhere if that's necessary. Right, well, it's not stuffed with viruses, so I suppose that's a uh, promising start. So that's fine. Now, as I said before, this uh, antenna, I really don't imagine it's going to work very well in this particular location because, say, we're out on the uh, fringes of the transmission area. The uh, transmitter here is actually about 40 miles away, and obviously that's uh, not exactly just around the corner. And uh, this does actually have a magnetic base, in fact, so if you've got a metal uh, surface, it will uh, stick on there, which is 
all very well if you have something metal you can uh, stick it to. Unfortunately, uh, no metal around here. But uh, anyway, never mind. We'll uh, connect it in, and it just plugs into the uh, side of this thing like that. And then also this just shoves in the USB uh, slot. So we'll just plug that in. Right, well, this says no driver found. Well, that's no surprise because it's obviously on that disk that came with it. So uh, pretty obviously we'll uh, just need to uh, open that. Right, so it's called a Blaze HD TV player, which seems uh, entirely unrelated to what's printed on the outside packaging. So we'll just install and uh, see what happens. Well, yeah, well, that didn't take very long, did it? It's an instant. So uh, anyway. So it's finished, so that seems to be it. So uh, restarting computer. Well, maybe not. I'm not very keen on doing that. But anyway, uh, also got this uh, player, which seems to be uh, the next item. So we'll just shove that in as well. English and a load of other languages we don't want. So yeah, whatever. It recommends a load of things, and we're not reading that. So we'll just blag through all of this and carry on. And regardless, because Nobody in the history of the universe has ever read any of that stuff, and uh, even if you disagreed with it, well, you're kind of stuffed, because obviously that means you can't actually use the software, which means the device is useless. So uh, let's just see what that file says. It's on the other screen. Right, it says October 30, 2005, uh, released, which uh, isn't exactly the most up-to-date effort. Um, copyright up to 2008, so it's pretty old. And it claims to have all of this stuff and so on, and good spelling there. Really aced, or whatever that's supposed to say. System requirements, well, quite frankly, uh, those are piss poor, so uh, the system is clearly much better than that. But then, obviously, uh, if this is from 2005, that was uh, probably fairly typical for the time, so that doesn't tell us anything we don't want to know. Instruction manual, not stated 2009, which is not uh, too promising either. Yeah, so it just seems to go through a load of things and whatever. Anyway, never mind about that. Let's just see if we can uh, install or start the software. Oh, it's stuck a nasty icon here, which I don't particularly like. Right, now this is on the uh, case of the, uh, or the disk itself, so we just need to enter that information. Right, I've just entered the uh, details from the case there, and uh, of course if we uh, zoom in, you won't be able to read them because I've blurred them out for obvious reasons. So well, that was a bit pointless zooming in there, wasn't it? So uh, anyway, let's just uh, register and see what gives. Right, it says, please relaunch to enjoy the unlocked whatever. So uh, presumably it will uh, do what it does. So uh, right, there we go then. So uh, now, and uh, what we've got here then is the uh, channel choice. So we've got country here, which is a really preset to United Kingdom, which is helpful. So uh, advanced has got uh, all the stuff we don't need to tamper with, so let's just uh, poke and see what happens. I say I'm fairly unhelpful here, not, I don't think it's going to find any because say, this little tiny aerial is uh, first of all inside, and of course uh, so the uh, transmitter is far away here, so uh, the uh, likelihood of this actually finding any channels without the external aerial is uh, pretty much zero, but we'll uh, have a go anyway. So a details button. Well, obviously this could take some time, so we'll uh, just uh, magically uh, fast forward due to editing and uh, see what happens at the end. Well, right, it's finished, and unsurprisingly, it hasn't found any channels at all. But uh, say so that's uh, exactly what I expected because say so the uh, aerial here is uh, not going to work. And if you look at the bottom, it actually says here, "Please set your antenna in open and wide place without shelter." Well, that's not happening because it's inside, and uh, it's not going to work even if it was outside. So. What we'll have to do is get a uh, cable from the main antenna on the roof and uh, somehow attach that to the device and then we shall have to scan again at a later time. Now that small aerial obviously was useless and uh, unsurprisingly of course didn't work. So uh, it came with this rather strange little uh, plug there. I'm not sure we can see that particularly well but uh, I don't have one of those and uh, certainly not an inclination to go and buy one. So I've just cut the uh, original wire and I've just spliced in there some uh, piece of uh, coaxial there, and that's actually going to the uh, aerial on the roof. 
which I happen to know works perfectly. So uh, we'll just plug this in again and then have a scan again and hopefully it will uh, find some channels this time. So uh, we'll just carry on with the scanning here. Uh, we can just uh, so you zoom in a bit there, generally scanning yes. So uh, again, country UK, well that's fine. And let's see uh, if it finds anything or not. Right, well it's found uh, 21 channels there it says, so uh, that's certainly a good start. Uh, bearing in mind these are digital, so they're divided up into multiplexes, each one of which contains a uh, various numbers of channels inside. So obviously it should jump up in uh, fairly large chunks as it goes through. Now the uh, transmitter we're using here is actually the Rural Ridge transmitter, which is a Group A, and that means all of the uh, channels are at the lower end of the frequency range. So uh, this is looking reasonably promising. Uh, it's claiming it's 100% strength and 80% quality, which uh, I suppose isn't too bad. This coaxial cable I'm using isn't actually the uh, proper kind. It's actually uh, something that's used normally for uh, satellite receivers. It's the uh, thinner variety that comes in a twin pair or musical shotgun cable. And I've just sort of uh, peeled half of it off and then just uh, connected the ends to the appropriate places. Right, now we've got a total of 83 channels there, which uh, probably is all we're going to get because, as I say, these are all going to be at the lower frequency end, so uh, it's going to uh, probably scan through the rest, but uh, unlikely to find a great deal at the top there. So we'll uh, fast forward and uh, hopefully get to the end more quickly. Now we're uh, just about 60% through, and it's actually found some additional channels, but uh, I think what's happening there is it's picking them up from a different transmitter because, uh, unfortunately, we're actually... Uh, nearer to the uh, transmitter we don't want than the uh, actual row ridge one, we'll say about 40 miles from the row ridge transmitter here. And uh, there is another one which uh, is on a different group, and I know this area isn't designed to pick that up. It's certainly not impossible that uh, some signal is going to be received from that. So uh, anyway, it seems to be around 118 channels now, so uh, we'll just let this get to right to the end, and then we'll see what we have there. Okay, we've just finished the uh, scan there, now at a uh, 100%, so uh, presumably we'll be able to uh, save this and uh, presumably get some uh, sort of picture there, so presumably just click OK and that's that. Right, well there's some kind of horrendous picture there, but clearly that's not uh, particularly good. That may well be the uh, other transmitter, which we don't particularly want. So, yeah, it's between channel 120 odd there, so that doesn't seem very useful. Now, uh, let's see what we've got at the uh, bottom end. Right, well that seems to work. That seems to be uh, Sky News there. Can't leave this on too long, otherwise I'll get some big slap for copyright or something. But uh, anyway, the uh, things seem to work there. So uh, let's just try a few of these in here. Right, that's some kind of advert, so that's fine. And... Uh, Some horrible shopping channel or other, and uh, the weather. So, uh, yeah, it does seem to work properly. i uh, just uh, turn the sound off there, otherwise, I've got a uh, slap of copyright full screen. Yeah, that seems to work fine. So, we'll just zoom out a bit there. We can see it fits the uh, display perfectly. This is actually a uh, 1080p uh, display, so uh, you would expect the picture to fill it. Now, uh, I don't think that's a high definition signal because I'm not entirely sure whether the uh, transmitter actually has HD on it or not yet. But uh, in any event, uh, we'll just put that out of the sight. So, anyway, it seems to function. Let's just have another look at uh, what we've actually got in here. So we've got a list of uh, the channels there. They don't seem to be in much of an order, I have to say, because Sky News shouldn't be number one, and uh, some of the others seem to be uh, way off. And uh, that looks like radio in there. And then, uh, yeah, they all seem to be a bit of a jumble, so uh, some uh, adjustment may be uh, needed there to the uh, channel numbers. But, Yeah, they seem to be in this QVC and the uh, other shopping things, and 
you know, ITV is there and Channel 5 and uh, all the other ITVs and Channel 4 and Plus 1 and Plus whatever. And a few more radios mixed in. Al Jazeera. Yeah, there's QVC again. I think there may be some uh, duplication going on here. Yeah, we've got uh, BBC One West there, which we don't really want because uh, although we're technically in that area, we don't uh, have that. We have the uh, south one, which is from the uh, road transmitter. Hmm. So certainly a bit of duplication there. And I say the, that was the one we uh, started out there on number... It says channel 8268, whatever the hell that is. Uh, doesn't even seem to have a name, but... Uh, very bad reception, but that's not surprising because the aerial is pointing in totally the opposite direction and it's not designed to pick up things in that frequency range either, so uh, hardly surprising that it didn't work properly. But uh, anyway, it seems uh, to work, so uh, let's just see if we can get another picture there. Well, there we go, that seems to be uh, working fine. I've just deleted those channels and uh, scanned again, but only at the uh, frequency range for that uh, particular transmitter. And uh, that's the uh, results there. So uh, the channel numbers are still all over the place. It uh, presumably doesn't uh, support the uh, officially published channel numbers, but uh, whatever. The uh, channels are there and uh, seem to work perfectly well. And uh, the uh, little remote control that came with it uh, does work also. And uh, so if you uh, so you press the uh, zoom button, it goes full screen and then back again. And you can adjust the volume there. It shows at the top of the image window. And then you've got the channel up and down as well. So there we have it. And I say if you type in the channel number, it does actually go to the required channel. So say put a number in there and it will actually change to that eventually. It seems to be a bit slow on the remote, but anyway, it gets there in the end. So uh, there we go, a bit of a win there, I think, uh, say less than a fiver, and uh, it seems to all work as described. Uh, there is a thing you can check for updates, but uh, unsurprisingly it just says uh, this is an OEM version and you can buy another one for $50 or something horrendous, so uh, whatever, we're not going to be uh, bothering with that. And uh, we'll just uh, turn that off, because obviously we may get uh, done for copyright if we leave that on there. Here's the actual uh, module there just uh, plugged in, and you see it has a little uh, red uh, LED on there, which uh, indicates that the uh, channel is uh, tuned in, it seems, because uh, when it isn't, and you move up a channel, it uh, goes off and then uh, will come on again when the channel is uh, displaying as intended. And I'm presuming the one next to it on the left there is the uh, receiver for the uh, infrared remote control. And so the antenna just uh, literally plugs inside. And that's pretty much all there is. The uh, YSA goes off to the outside aerial, and that seems to work just fine. And so, of course, the inside one did not work. But then uh, I didn't really expect it to, certainly at this distance. And even if you were right next to the transmitter, I can't really imagine that little stubby thing uh, really doing much of a job. So that's the uh, television receiver for less than £5. And although it didn't work with that uh, internal aerial, well, uh, let's face it, uh, there was no hope of that uh, ever picking up any signal. But uh, connected to the proper external aerial, and it seems to work just fine. Uh, the uh, channel numbers are a bit of a shambles, but that's no doubt due to the uh, software that came with it. And uh, obviously, uh, for under a fiver, including the software, well, I uh, can hardly complain there. But uh, certainly, the, uh, all the channels seem to be in there. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.